Next Trader Joe's in Chicago. I love it. <laughs> I don't know why they don't have any interactive fountains for uh, those of us who are students. Anyway, hi, um, I'm Maya. I'd like to welcome you to the latest episode of my vlog series, Hello World with Maya. So I hope you guys have been enjoying my uh, vlogs and, uh, on my adventures to and inside Chicago. And so far you've seen uh, air travel stuff today. I'm going to talk about my experiences of going to Chicago as well as show little snippets of the trip itself. Well, as you guys know, Chicago is called the Windy City, but instead I called it the Rainy City. Hmm. On my way out, it looks like Chicago went from the, the Windy City to the Rainy City. And actually, uh, there's a fun fact about Chicago, um, and this is actually a misconception. For those of you that don't know, uh, Chicago is not windy, or it's not named Windy City for its uh, wind currents and, and uh, breeze off the lake. No, not at all. Rather, uh, the Windy City is named after, um, I guess it's a politic, it was a political thing. I'm not sure how that goes over, but I'll have to look that up when I get home. I believe that's something that my dad told me years ago after we drove through here uh, on our way down to Atlanta, which is uh, my home sweet home. <laughs> So, when I was looking at the forecast before I uh, got to Chicago, they said the weather was going to be nice and it was going to be um, low to mid 70s and it was supposed to be really sunny. But they said that there would be some thunderstorms in the wake of a big heat wave that was going on in Chicago. So that didn't surprise me. But I had absolutely no idea that they would delay a uh, flight that much and then they would uh, cancel it so I got to Chicago and the weather was cooler than it is in Atlanta it felt like early spring uh, early fall when it started to cool down right here in Atlanta so I was a little bit underdressed up there but I tried to dress for 70 degree weather so uh, so anyway, I got in and I checked into my hostel and took a nap. But before I took a nap, I met my roommate. I had a chance to take a shower because our dorm room had its own bathroom with a personal shower. And then in other parts of the hostel, they had uh, public restrooms with other showers on other floors. So, uh, I had a chance to get myself settled in and I took a nap. And then I went shopping at Trader Joe's and then I. Oh, I didn't notice yeah, that's what. The With my groceries, I'm finally in Chicago after all the craziness and the mess. Had a chance to lay down because I had a headache earlier. But um, I'm grabbing myself a couple of bins and putting them away. Uh, YouTube, I just got pasta and other stuff so i'm just really happy i get to um, save a little bit of money buy groceries and i can cook so i went to uh, i went and just sort of explored the area and then i went and bought myself some dinner there and then i went back and watched a little bit of the first jurassic world movie 
which was on TV in honor of uh, the Jurassic World sequel that was coming out that very weekend. So uh, I had a chance to have dinner there. I had a chance to uh, meet some other peeps and a chance to give out my business cards. Uh, but because the weather was cooler, I didn't really want to stay up too late. And then B, I had wanted to go and check out the city. I wanted to, first of all, go to the Adler Museum or the Adler Planetarium, as well as checking out like the Bean and the Buckingham Fountain and all that other free stuff. So I'd be able to save a little bit of money and of course, get a chance at deep dish pizza. So I go to bed, right? Which uh, my dorm rooms are very small. Okay. I'm getting ready to go uh, crash in my room. Uh, I'm going to go back in and turn on the light, show you what what my sleeping quarters look like. I was just talking to my roommate. It's really cool. Thanks. Okay. If I turn the light off, do you mind if I turn the light? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to sleep in a little bit. Do you mind if I shut the light off? Thank you. I'm, I gotta change clothes and take a nap. All right. Thank you much. All right. First, I gotta change clothes. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the bathroom in a little bit. And, oh. uh, YouTube. That's another one of my roommates. So, I'm a vlogger on YouTube. So. But I get up the next day and I discover I get a text from my friend that there's rain in the forecast instead of a nice sunny 70 degree weather on the uh, second day of summer. So, uh, so I, I pack my umbrella, try to stay as dry as possible. I check my email, which is all about the brunch with Temple Grandin, and I get an email from uh, from Brenda Weisberg, who is the director of um, the Asperger, the Asper Aspiratec. They're the ones who uh, gave me the press pass and helped donate a ticket, and they helped make a donation to my cause with the GoFundMe. And in the email, it talked about what to expect. And one of the things were that there is going to be a buffet brunch, which was interesting. So regardless of that, I got myself up and I got myself going and it was pouring down rain. Um, of course, I'm wearing sandals and I have an umbrella with me. Um, so, so here I am walking along the streets walking my way to the L after getting myself directions or getting some directions so I can get to the Adler and they tell me which train station to get off at. And they tell me that, uh, that once I get off at this train station, I can just walk all the way down to the Adler Planetarium and I forget what they call that area I think it's like the museum district or something. So I start walking down there. As I get closer, I realize the area itself, as I get to this little island, which is where all the, the, planet, the Adler Planetarium and the Shedd Aquarium and uh, the Field Museum of Natural History are, and I find out that it's not pedestrian friendly like, uh, the, uh, like the guy at the front desk at the hostel set. So, I try to find myself another way around, try to get over there, but of course, um, this is an area of houses between uh, another transit system called the Metra and, and the other, but nonetheless, regardless, I try to walk up this hill and try to cut through and try to get to where I want to go. And sadly, I end up falling on my bottom 
and uh, breaking my purse and bruising my left hand. So I end up having to go to uh, Target, which is luckily right up the street, and buy myself a brand new purse and wipe myself off because my bottom is covered in mud. So needless to say, I went there and then I got back, waited for the bus and the uh, uh, I'm sitting, I'm standing waiting outside in the rain for this bus that can take us to where we go. So I finally board the bus. It is jam packed like sardines at 11 o'clock in the morning. And on top of that, the traffic is backed up. And so it takes forever for us to go right up the road from this uh, L station to the, uh, the Adler Planetarium. So unfortunately, I didn't get any footage, but I had a chance to check out a couple of planetarium shows, which were spectacular. And then I had a chance to look around at some of their artifacts and have lunch there because it's pouring down rain. I don't want to go out anywhere. And I sit, because it's so packed, I meet this girl from the, uh, the sh she said she's from uh, Champaign, Illinois. And so she and I have a good lunch. Um, I talked to her for a little bit and then uh, I head out and it is uh, done raining by then and there is by the way uh, Lake Michigan right in front of me Chicago. you won't believe the crazy morning I had so uh, I had attempted to walk to what behind me is the Adler Museum and uh, unfortunately I didn't get any video footage it was too overwhelming in there uh, I also spent a little bit too much money because um, I wanted to give myself a little treat unfortunately I ran out of time because I'm meeting my friend today so we're going to um, we're going to a cat's cafe here in Chicago called uh, the Windy Kitty but uh, I always knew when I was 14 years old that Chi-Town slash the Windy City would be my favorite um, metropolis, my favorite city in the Midwest. Especially after the time we drove down in uh, 96. But I, I knew we wouldn't, I knew I wouldn't move here. I mean, I don't think I want to move here because, uh, I mean, it's cold in the winter and B, um, those trains just get to be too crowded and three uh, the trains here are just much slower than they are in Atlanta but needless to say I uh, love the view here this is Lake Michigan right in front of me and uh, the water is overlapping and people can walk all the way down so I decided to take a look at it because I haven't seen Lake Michigan since I was a little girl or let alone a great lake since I was about 17 years old which was Lake Superior and that was the last time I'd ever seen it so seeing Lake Michigan for me was a real treat and so I had to stop and look and then afterwards I went to uh, the hot dog stand right behind there and it's right by the Adler and they had a um, they had a hot dog and a drink for about three to three to five bucks I'm not sure so I got myself a Chicago dog which I absolutely love. I mean, they make them here in Atlanta at the, uh, at the hot dog factory, which is right in the same building where I work. So I decided to go ahead and get myself a hot dog and a sparkling water. And then 
I went to the Cats Cafe and I had a chance to get my to the Cats Cafe, which was called the Windy Kitty. Now they have two options like they do in Atlanta. There's um, there's the Windy Kitty, which is where my friend and I went. And then there's also Catcade, which is an arcade where you can get a soda and play with cats up for an hour. So I'm waiting for my friend now and I'm sitting at one of the L stations, which is um, another abbreviation for elevation. So they call it the L for short, like the letter L, because uh, a majority of these trains are elevated. Do uh, these trains go underground? Yes. Uh, I am absolutely fascinated with uh, the trains around here. I love the stations, like I love this one. The platform here has wooden floors and the trains themselves make me think of the subways in New York. Um, it's just fascinating. I mean, I am down the street, my hostel, sorry. I, I ran over my words, but my hostel is down the street from the L. And so this morning when I was uh, boarding the train getting ready to go to the um, Adler Planetarium, the train was, uh, was just approaching and it was just a really beautiful sight to see. And see, that's what I like. I like uh, situations with massive public transit and it'd be nice if Atlanta had something like this, but uh, only time will tell if people uh, continue to get their rears in gear because Atlanta is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger all the time. So. So, heads up, I ended up uh, getting a text from my friend. He ended up eating downtown and he'd meet me there and I said, uh, no problem, I think I'll just uh, go ahead and meet you at Windy Kitty. So, my friend made the reservations and we went to uh, the Windy Kitty, which is very different from Java Cats or the Happy Tabby because they don't have a coffee shop, it's just a cat shelter at this place, at this point where you can go and play with these foster cats and you can give them love and attention or you can go out, meet one and adopt one. They don't have a coffee shop in there because of uh, some of the silly uh, rules in Chicago. So, now unfortunately I didn't get any footage there for the following reasons. Number one, I needed to charge my phone Number two, the cats were adorable. Number three, I was busy trying to talk to uh, the owners and then my friend. And then um, they had on the movie A Little Princess, which was one of my favorite childhood movies, uh, the one that came out in 1994. So I had my hands full, so there, I didn't get any footage of that. And then afterwards, I went home and I'm not home, but I went back to the hostel. Matt, my friend went home. I went back to the hostel, but on our way, we talked about uh, what we were going to do when, uh, when we met up for Temple's talk. So we talked about the game plan, and I just decided to go there early because A, I had that press pass, and B, I wanted to make sure that I met with uh, Brenda and had a chance to talk with some of the other people because I'm a blogger and because I'm trying to put myself out there. So I got there as early as possible. But on the way there, again, the weather was yucky and rainy and I almost got lost uh, just in that area walking down the wrong way. And the rain itself felt like ice on my feet. And my thoughts were, really? This is summertime, this is ridiculous. So needless to say, I went in there and uh, the first person I met was Brenda and she was setting up. I said, excuse me, are you Brenda? And I said, I'm here to blog. And Brenda went, Maya! So she talked to me for about five minutes, but because she was so busy setting up, she really couldn't socialize. So she encouraged me to go sit down in the ballroom and get myself ready. So. Um, what I learned though was about this, uh, this country club where Temple was speaking at for this benefit for Aspiratech 
is that uh, the area itself used to be an old military bunker and they converted it into a country club. So this is it. I'm finally here today for the temple talk. Uh, it's a beautiful area. Unfortunately, the weatherman got everything all mixed up because it was supposed to be 70 degrees, sunny and warm, and we got this instead. In the process of getting set up, I don't really have much space on this phone. I want to save some of it for uh, a picture or two with Temple Grand on. As you know, I like to put those on my Facebook, but here's my notebook. So, I did that, and then uh, I ended up meeting a, a wonderful mother, I guess, who had a child with different issues. I think ADHD or something, but she was trying to struggle to get her child out of special ed. So, she had a chance to connect with, uh, with Temple quite a while ago on what she could do. So. She was uh, going to meet her for the first time in person, even though they had spoken on the phone uh, back and forth when he was growing up. So they had a chance to catch up, and so both of them were really excited about it. So needless to say, um, needless to say I was talking to her, in walks Dr. Grandin, and of course I'm nervous, and the lady next to me is nervous, and she explains to me, oh my goodness, my knees are buckling, my knees are buckling. And I said, uh, no, uh, you need to consider uh, talking to her. I'll be happy to get some pictures of you two. So Temple walks in and she's looking our direction. And so being that I'm acquainted with her and being that, that I go to her talks all the time, I, s <laughs> I said, good morning, Dr. Grandin. And because uh, her flight had arrived really late, I think it was delayed too or something, but I could have misheard that. But she was tired and she didn't know what to think. And so I go, good morning, Dr. Grandin. And she goes, hi. So she looks at me and she goes, ooh, which was, uh, which was, the fun <laughs> which was funny. But I, at that point, I just felt really awkward and I felt out of place and my thoughts were, oh my goodness. What have I done? What am I doing up here? Even though I spent a month looking forward to something that, that involves a woman that I really look up to. So, um, uh, so I settled in and I had a chance to network with some of the other people there. And then my friend arrived. So, while I was waiting, I had a chance to get some photos with Temple and get some photos of Temple. But while the event was getting ready, they were having some technical difficulties. So poor Temple was uh, frazzled. I was very overwhelmed and I was very nervous. And again, uh, I could feel my uh, anxiety levels rising. I, mean, I didn't run away or anything, but there's a part of me deep down inside that just wanted to cry because I just so I felt so awkward and out of place because I was in a new setting and I was meeting new people and I'm used to seeing Temple in the Southeast region around people that I'm accustomed to. So, um, either way, uh, the event got going and um, I got in line and with my friend so I could get a picture or two of them that Mad could. Uh, that he could meet Temple Grandin. And uh, by the time we were getting up there, Temple politely told us, which I think was the funniest thing she said all morning. She goes, pardon me, but they're making me get something to eat, which I got a crack out of. And so we needed to eat too. So my friend and I started walking and we ended up right there in line in front of Temple. And so here I was, so here's how it went. Here I was, I was way in the back, my friend was in the middle, and Temple was right in front of my friend. So that in itself was exciting, but I was nervous. I was nervous. I watched, because you know, you know Temple is Miss Manners, and she's always uh, correcting people for their, uh, for their manners. I mean, like a reach across the table instead of saying, please pass a fork or just waiting in turn. And of course, 
I made a mistake of reaching for a plate when it wasn't my turn yet, and then that's how nervous I was. But, I mean, it was awkward just standing right there. So we went and we sat down and uh, I had a chance, my friend and I had a chance to network with two other women who were sitting at a table. And by the way, I didn't sit at the same table with Temple, but her table was right next to mine. And uh, my cha her chair was, uh, was just a few feet away from mine. So that was really awkward too. So I was really nervous. And then the talk began and the entire time Temple talked about some really, really, really um, important things. And, and then they had the Q&A and I got up and I had a chance to confront, tends to uh, do my session with her. And that's, I call them sessions because uh, whenever I ask a question, she likes to interrupt me and then she likes to go off on a tangent. It's just, it's hysterical. So we were talking about parents that like to coddle their adult children and we're talking about employment programs when uh, parents should be learning how to use their own networks to get their kids into jobs. Uh, people that could be helping them move forward. And so we got into a long dialogue back and forth. I mean, it was fun. It was fun. I think it was one of, I think that was one of my favorite parts as well as when Temple gave the, um, I got, they're gonna make me get something to eat. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so there was that and then the event itself ended but it, it I mean the talk ended and then uh, I had purchased her latest book uh, which was uh, Calling All Minds I haven't uh, dove into it yet but I finished reading the stories I tell my friends which is by Anita Lesko I just finished it last week uh, and I had a chance to write a review about it for uh, Future Horizons. And actually, I will tell you a really big news on that. They didn't call me out on it when I mocked them. <laughs> Let's see if I can get Temple over there. I'm, I'm not gonna interview her, I'm just gonna see if I can shoot some video okay. footage. Nope, no video footage. There she is, there she is. Right. I'm here today with my friend. You wanna get on, wanna say hello? Okay, yeah, no, no, he's too camera shy. But um, we're waiting in line. Wave. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's camera shy. But anyway, no, no, no. Don't, don't take that. I'm used to selfies. I'm trying to get footage of Brandon over there. She is great. She is great. Um, just had a nice, uh, a nice Q and A, as what my friend says, Q and I, with sort of question and interruption. Because Temple is very good at interrupting. Unless she finds that you have the same personality, she'll interrupt you and go off on a tangent. It's really funny. So, um, uh, so I, got, I had a chance to get in line. Well, good luck with your travels. I'm going. And I had a chance to, uh, again, get a, get some pictures with her. And my friend was in a couple of them. And here are some of my favorites. And then... The event ended, and and then I went home. But but again, I felt really, really awkwardly out of place. I mean, there were a lot of things that were that I enjoyed. I mean, there's a lot I'm learning. Um, I connected with a few people from Aspiratech, and I'm hoping to go up there in October. But I left the event feeling sad because uh, Temple was overwhelmed and stressed out, and. Half of the people that Temple uh, saw were just really uppity because uh, that's a benefit and that's a very, very rich area. And honestly, a couple of the women at my table were annoying, so. But anyway, after that, I went back and took a nap at the hostel. Um, so 
I am back from Temple Grandin's talk, the event that I raised money for. Unfortunately, the event didn't go as well as I would have hoped um, for a number of reasons. I don't care to get into them, but I will tell you that on a uh, level of several, on several levels, I felt like I was out of place there based on the type of audiences that she drew. I could also tell that uh, Temple is worn out and uh, she uh, had to put up with a lot of, honestly, a lot of bullshit today. And I'm not gonna get into it, but I could tell that she was overwhelmed. She wasn't her normal, friendly self. Usually when she's tired, and if you have a conversation with her, she'll go, okay, okay. I couldn't figure out why in the world she did that, but she says, quote, okay, when she's tired or when she's overwhelmed. But when she's her normal friendly self and she's not having one of her coughing fits, she's very friendly. But the other thing too is that she had a jam-packed schedule in addition to also not feeling good because uh, the last couple times I've seen her, she has been uh, up there on stage and has a coughing fit. She had to stop her talk today to put a couple of cough drops in her mouth. And I'm thinking, <laughs> that's not good. That woman needs to uh, take some me time for herself. But, but from what I've read in, uh, in Anita Lesko's book, which is one of Temple Grandin's great friends or close friends, she, um, she likes to go, 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 and that's part of the problem. And she talked about it today, that she wouldn't know what to do with, her, with herself if she took care of herself for a while. And then I got myself up, ate some leftovers from Trader Joe's, and decided to check out early, and I decided to go well, stay at a hotel by uh, Chicago O'Hare Airport. So I got there. And I decided to stay at the Hilton, which is built right into the airport, because I had an, a flight at six o'clock the next morning. So I just stayed on site and I just ate some snacks in my room the rest of the night and I uh, watched airplanes take off uh, from the tarmac on that side. So, but anyway, regardless to say, uh, I came back the next morning, I was tired and sad disappointed with how the event went, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna stop connecting with Temple Grandin. Uh, I had a chance to email her after the event was over and after I was checked into my hotel room at the Hilton and she had a chance to uh, email me back, but I was exhausted. So at any rate, if you like what I'm doing, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also be sure to share this on your social media um, if you're in the autistic communities. And I'd also like you to give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Until next time, I'm Maya and I'm signing off. Bye.